If you want a nice relaxing project to work on this weekend because you got a few hours to kill, this one ain't it. I'll be honest, working with full size sheet goods ain't a light job. You're gonna break a sweat. Then again, here in Florida, you can break a sweat just by standing in the shade. I've tried to make this process as simple as possible by simply stretching out into the driveway. That way I've got some elbow room and it makes things just a little bit easier. Measuring from the factory edge on this ply, I'll measure the width for the sides of my storage cabinets plus the distance from the edge of my circular saw to the blade. In my case, I'm simply adding five inches to the width of my sides and I'm gonna mark for that measurement. Speaking of measurements and materials, you can head off to my website, simplyeasydiy.com for a complete list of those, along with the cut list. Check the description, I'll have all the links. I'm building two of these, so I've got a few more of those cuts to make. After that is done, I'll take each side and route two dados and one rabbit. Now, in my case, I know the distance from the edge of my router to the back side of my bit in order to give me a good fitting rabbit, so I'll simply mark that out with a combination square. After that is done, I'll just simply make sure that everything is good to go by checking it with this piece of scrap. And we're good. The two dados, one will be for the bottom piece and the middle divider that will help with structural support. The middle divider is the only shelf that is built directly into the cabinet itself. The other shelves are simply gonna be placed with some shelf pins and can be adjusted to fit our fancy. So if we need to adjust them higher or lower based on what we have stored on a particular shelf, we can do that. All these placements are gonna be on my website, so don't worry about it, you can check over there. The dado for the center shelf is measured up from that bottom dado. Speaking of those top, bottom, and center pieces, I'll cut those with a circular saw first. And I'm gonna cut these just a little bit longer than I need, in this case about a quarter of an inch. That way I can head over to my table saw, trim them all up, and make sure each one is exactly the same length. This is my rip fence alignment jig. Those of you that have been around my channel for a while probably know what this is, but if you're new or haven't seen that build, you're gonna to wanna to check that out. Here's a link for you. I don't need to align my fence anymore with this new table saw, but I do find it serves all sorts of uses in my shop, so it's a good little all around jig. With everything cut to size, trimmed up, and routed, I'll lay all my pieces out. Apply some glue to all the joints, then fold everything together. Clamps where needed. Some right angle clamps are gonna help me make sure that the cabinet stays square. I'm not gonna be using a face frame with this design. It's what's otherwise called a frameless cabinet style. Good for those who like minimalist designs, but you do have to be a little bit more accurate with squaring everything up because if you're not, later on when the doors go on, you're gonna be able to see it. Once that is dry, I took it out of the clamps and ran a line of glue along the back edge. Now I can just take a quarter inch piece of ply and lay that on top. And I've learned it's better to not try to get too cute when cutting this piece to size. I always cut it slightly larger than I need when doing an assembly like this. And then I can take a flush cut bit around the outside to make sure everything is neat and tidy. Now I can flip it over and apply some edge banding to the front edge. And just trim that flush. Easy peasy. Installing the bases is simple and easy. After scoring the caulk line on my baseboard, I can remove that from the wall. 
And no, that didn't break, that was just the seam in the baseboard. I want a three inch gap between my cabinet and the wall to allow the doors to swing open without banging against the wall. So I cut a couple three inch pieces from the baseboards that I just took off and I'll tack one here in the corner. Then I can set one of the cabinets in place and bump it up against that piece. Same thing on the other side, just to keep everything in the room symmetrical. I'm going to anchor these to the wall with a couple of screws and washers. If you can find some studs, use those. If not, use some drywall anchors. And no, I don't care if they're plastic or metal. It's your home. Do as you like. Now I can measure, cut, and tack the final baseboard piece in place between the two homeschool storage cabinets. Now up the side of the cabinets you can just run a line of caulk as well to tie everything into the wall or you can take a piece of quarter round molding to complete the install. I didn't do either because I have another project coming up that'll fit between these two projects and I figure it would be better if I just dealt with it at that point when I decide to tackle that project. The doors for a project like this can be as simple or as complex as you'd like to make them. I'm building rail and style type of doors but not raised panels. They're quick to do easy to assemble and look pretty good too. I'm using a rail and style router bit set that I happen to have on hand you don't need this. A simple slot cutter bit will get the job done for you or any other number of ways can be used as well. However, when everything is said and done, they should fit something like this. Nice and flush both sides, fits and holds together all by themselves without falling apart. The hardest part about doing it this way is the setup process. I'm not going to go into that here in this video because there's no way that I can explain that setup process in about 15-20 seconds. That is a video all to itself. That center panel, let's rip that to width first, then I can flip it 90 degrees and cut the final size. Now I can apply some glue to the ends of my boards fit everything together like a puzzle. Gonna want to take care of that glue squeeze out now because if it dries on the boards and then I sand it down later, when I apply my stain, I'm probably still gonna be able to see that. Now that is not a bad looking joint right there. Also, don't forget to check for square by measuring the diagonals. If you don't do that, as I said earlier, I am using a frameless cabinet style design. And if everything isn't squared up, the eye is just gonna pick up on it. That's one of the drawbacks of using this minimalist type of design. After a very light and short sand, I can apply my choice of stain, followed by a couple coats of varnish. What I used was a satin poly, but whatever is used, it needs to be able to harden so that it provides some protection from dings and scratches. A latex paint is just simply not gonna be able to do that for you. So stay away from that. Even if you decide to use a milk paint, it still needs to be sealed and whatever you do please do not use polyurethane over white paint polyurethane is going to yellow over time and you're just going to be able to see that i'm using some concealed hinges that do not need to be mortised into the doors one of the benefits of using a hinge like this is it allows the doors to sit flush with the side of the cabinets instead of needing a reveal as questions come up i'll address those over on the blog post so check over there first check the description i'll link you from there you know i think this is going to provide a nice place to keep all our homeschool supplies and textbooks neat and tidy as well as provide a nice place to sit relax and just read a book homeschool storage that doubles as a reading nook win-win Hey, don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Pinterest. Subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget to drop me a like or a dislike. Until then.